Good evening guys, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Dr. Paul once again. Thank you for taking your time this evening to watch this video on atrial fibrillation. As usual, I invite you to visit our website at uh, www.usmlevideos.net that is uh, www.usmlevideos.net where we have already posted hundreds of videos. In fact, you can subscribe to a daily USMLE video on our website. So please take some time today to visit us. Today let me give you some of the most important points you need to remember when you answer atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is basically characterized by an irregularly irregular ventricular rate and absence of P waves. Those are the two most important things you need to remember. And the atrial rate is disorganized. The rate goes like 300 to 600 beats per minute. So the basic problem is uh, disorganized atrial rates. But the ventricular filling is not much affected. Why? Remember the cardiac cycle. What happens in cardiac cycle? The ventricles are filled during the rapid filling phase when the mitral valve and tricuspid valves are open. Remember how the blood goes from left atrium into the left ventricle through the mitral valve. So just by opening mitral valve, 70% of the blood is pumped from left atrium into the left ventricle. Only last 30% of the blood needs the pumping activity of atrial contraction. So as the atria are fibrillating, that 30% of blood is not going into the ventricles. But 70% has gone. So that's very important point to remember right there. If the patient has valvular heart disease, that actually complicates atrial fibrillation. Why? That 70% of uh, blood that is pumped into the left ventricle just by the action of gravity is actually disrupted. It cannot go into left ventricle because of the valvular disease or cardiomyopathy or postmyocardial infarction. So if it is an isolated lone atrial fibrillation that is actually a better condition than other conditions associated with valvular disease, cardiomyopathy each. So we come to the incidence. It is the most common sustained cardiac arrhythmia in the United States. In fact, in adults like 10% uh, older than 80 years old, they develop this problem. As I mentioned earlier, conditions like uh, valvular disease, cardiomyopathy, chronic hypertension, myocardial ischemia, myocarditis, pericarditis, congenital heart disease, they complicate atrial fibrillation. Similarly, if the patient is alcoholic, drinks caffeine, pulmonary embolism, hypoxia, hyperthyroidism, when they are also present, atrial fibrillation has a higher incidence in those patients. Now let us see the important uh, complications of EAF. The most important thing to remember is uh, embolism. The emboli can go into brain circulation and cause uh, strokes. As many as 5% uh, can develop stroke as a result of uh, a thromboembolic event. Now the treatment. Treatment is just treating uh, the characteristic features of atrial fibrillation. As we mentioned, it is the irregularly irregular ventricular rate. So you need to control ventricular rate. Number two, the complication is thromboembolic disease. So you need to anticoagulate the patient. But before you go for those treatments, you need to determine whether the patient is stable or unstable. If the patient is unstable, you should always do cardioversion. You take uh, cardioversion starting at 100 joules 
and then increase it by 50 joules until you reach a sinus rhythm. So that is the treatment for unstable patients. For stable patients, it, de it depends. The treatment depends on the time of onset. Perhaps if you don't know when the atrial fibrillation started, or if it is more than 48 hours, then you need to anticoagulate patient. For example, you anticoagulate patient with warfarin for three weeks, then you do cardioversion, and then you anticoagulate the patient for another four weeks. That is the treatment when the, uh, when the onset of atrial fibrillation has passed by 48 hours. But if it is less than 48 hours, you don't have to anticoagulate the patient. You can go directly for cardioversion. Now, there is another method actually, that is using heparin. If you heparin, heparinize the patient, if you anticoagulate the patient initially with heparin, then you can try cardioversion provided by transesophageal echocardiography, you can, you can rule out any clots in the left atrial appendages. For example, you heparinized the patient for some time, then you did transesophageal echocardiography. And in transesophageal echocardiography, you did not see a clot, then you should cardiovert the patient and then keep him on anticoagulation for four weeks. But if you see the blood clot in TEE, then you should anticoagulate the patient first for three weeks, then cardiovert and then continue anticoagulation for another four weeks. So basically those are the things you need to remember. And now when you come to the Ventricular rate response, how to control the ventricular rate? There are three groups of drugs. Number one, calcium channel blockers. Number two, beta blockers. Number three, digoxin. So these drugs are very helpful in controlling the ventricular rate. For example, if the patient has hyperthyroidism and atrial fibrillation, beta blockers are very, very helpful. But if the patient has a a uncompensated congestive heart failure, then beta blockers are not a good idea. In the same way, one of the most commonly used drug is uh, diltiazem, commonly known as cardizem. This is very popular in, in the hospitals. And uh, so diltiazem and verapamil and uh, calcium channel blockers are very, very useful. So these are helpful to control the ventricular rate. Finally, a few words about anticoagulation. When you anticoagulate patient with warfarin, you aim to reach an INR between two and three in most of the cases. And for a few weeks, you need to do pro-time and INR evaluations every weekly for some time and if they are stable. And if you reach the goals, you can actually go for um, a bi-weekly or even monthly pro-time INR checkups. So anticoagulation is very important because, as I mentioned earlier, thromboembolism is the complication of uh, atrial fibrillation. Th so those are the main points. And uh, regarding disposition, you can dispose the patient if he is uh, stable and his ventricular rate is controlled. But if the patient has developed atrial fibrillation recently, then you should always think about hospitalizing the patient because ventricular rate is very, very important. You should control the ventricular rate. For example, a patient 65 years old in the hospital suddenly became, became cold. Her limbs became cold. She is disoriented and nurses went and uh, felt her to be not in a good condition, she is confused and uh, you were called, you went and you saw the pulse, it was irregularly irregular, you took an EKG, there were no P waves on the EKG. Then what do you do? You should treat it. First of all, think about starting some drugs that control the activity. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.